Monday. It was about good and bad news for Colin Kaepernick in his return as the 49er starting quarterback. The good news is that Cap threw for nearly 200 yards with a TD and no picks while also running for another 66 yards. The bad news is his team was blown out 45 to 16 in Buffalo after the game. Chip Kelly was asked if Kaepernick would remain the starter and he just said, we'll see. Stephen A., was it a mistake to start Kaepernick in the first place? Not at all. I mean, it is what it is. He's got to get in there. He's got to work off the rust. Uh, he's got to, and the conditions are not going to change. It really wasn't about the Buffalo Bills. It's how anemic the San Francisco 49ers are. Their offense has no playmakers. Their defense is awful. They've given up 100 yards rushing to five consecutive runners over the last five weeks. Chip Kelly, once again, surprise, surprise, no surprise at all. He's paid little to no attention to the defense, and it gets to a point where the second half of the game arrives, and it's like you don't even care. You don't even want to be out there. That's how the 49ers absolutely positively look. I understand the temptation to sit up there and say, hold off on Colin Kaepernick. Colin Kaepernick was clearly set up to fail. I don't put that on Chip Kelly as much as I put that on Trent Baalke. I think Trent Baalke, the general manager uh, for the San Francisco 49ers, is awful. He's the guy that contributed to, to running Jim Harbaugh out of town. We see what a moribund, pathetic franchise the San Francisco 49ers have regressed back into now that Jim Harbaugh is gone and baalke has got his fingerprints written all over that along with Ned York. But in the end, what it comes down to about Colin Kaepernick, this Buffalo Bills defense, Max, Rex Ryan paid the ultimate insult to Chip Kelly without even mentioning his name. When asked whether or not he was going to, he made any halftime adjustments, he said, no, not at all, didn't need to. And it was, the score was only 17-13 because he knew that Chip Kelly was going to do the same thing over and over and over again. There was nothing special about it. And as a result, he just, the defense just remained disciplined and that was what it was. For the record, Rex Ryan's seat getting colder, ain't it? Um, cooler yes. and cooler. Well, let's cooling get cooler off, and cooler. Because you were calling for his head not well, long well, ago. That's right. When they were going to, and they looked awful, and he fired his offensive coordinator hmm. using him as a scapegoat. But this new guy has stepped in. Sure they scored has. over 30, and they're running the ball more effectively, and the defense looks halfway scored decent. Scored 128 points on San Francisco uh, yesterday. I mean, that was a ridiculous score. Listen, this was a mistake to start Colin Kaepernick against the Bills, just as I said it was going into the game. And in fact, they got off easy. It could have been a lot worse. The Bills hit the quarterback more than all, but I mean, they're among the league. It changes week to week, but they're among the best at hitting the quarterback, and they hit the quarterback hard. And the fact that Kaepernick got out of there relatively unscathed is lucky for him and the Bills and the Niners. And the fact that he's shaken off some rust is also another good benefit of that game. But that was a mistake. And I want to get into that to that set up to fail thing to sound you know, let's get into this conspiracy theory a little bit first of all they negotiate out his injury provision so they're not guaranteed money if, he doesn't get guaranteed money if he gets hurt but they buy him an insurance policy the insurance policy is much cheaper for the team than actually paying out the money if he does get hurt the insurance company pays out right. the money Good point. then they start him against the team a vicious defense that's been hot on the road now, why would you do that if you want your guy to look good, if you're trying to win? That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Now, okay, so he got out of there without an injury. They're not out of it that way, if you follow this conspiracy theory. I'm not saying a subscribe to it. But, but, I, it but I do subscribe to it. It is interesting. That's my point. And then you can now sit back and say, well, I don't know who's better, Blaine Gabbert or Colin Kaepernick. They're kind of similar. And, in fact, this version of Colin Kaepernick is similar to Gabbert, and he won't look any better than Gabbert if it's you start similar. him in Buffalo. It's not they similar. should have waited till he's at home it's against the Bucks and it's not, start it's him not, then. It's not similar because he made plays with his legs. He was the leading rusher for the team last year, last uh, yesterday rather, and that's something that Blaine Gabbert would never do. In the end, what it comes down to is this: Colin Kaepernick. There is no doubt that he brings more weapons to the table and. He should have been used earlier as far as I'm concerned. I think he has been set up to fail. I wouldn't put it past the 49ers as, as at all right now because I think based on the whole Jim Harbaugh situation, a legitimate argument could be made that they look, they appear to look like a corrupt organization. Yeah, I really think this, that's fair. But this is what's odd to me. I know what you mean. I'm saying there are reasons to go into that conspiracy theory. What's odd to me, though, is Chip Kelly offense. We're going to run a lot instead of short passes, because short passes, there's a possibility of turning the ball over a little more than a running play, right? You have, there, are more, there are more variables. 
And when we take shots passing, it's going to be down the field. That's Kaepernick. Kaepernick is the right quarterback for that system. Which why, is why hire which Chip is, Kelly is, for a Kaepernick team I if told, you want to set I him told, up? I totally agree. But my point is that, hold on. I see what you're saying. You're saying that why hire Chip Kelly if you want to set Colin Kaepernick up? What I'm saying to you is that the whole setup process began after Chip Kelly arrived. I think that bulky with Chip Kelly in terms of their mode of thinking. I'm not saying Chip Kelly himself is involved in this. But to hire Chip Kelly and to bring him in after his history in Philadelphia. Philadelphia, to follow that up with Kaepernick not wanting to be there, to follow that up with the Kaepernick protest, to follow that up with Kaepernick's contractual situation, and you weren't able to unload him to Denver, all of that stuff. I'm looking at how things unfolded, and in the aftermath of Chris yes, Kelly's arrival, I agree. that's where there, I'm at. There's plenty of evidence to support a conspiracy me. theory there, and when you think about starting him at home against the Bucks, a much worse defense in a town that would you'd think would be more sympathetic to Kaepernick's cause, at home especially, mm -hmm. versus... Buffalo on the road, a place where there was a vendor outside the stadium selling Kaepernick T-shirts with his with his uh, face in the crosshairs. I mean, that w w you know, completely reckless and irresponsible and a really bad thing to do. But you sent him to a hostile environment yeah. against a vicious defense like it's being set you up. Didn't, you didn't know it was going to be that hostile. Though. No, of yeah. course. And unless they thought that was their only shot to win with Kaepernick. But we're going to break. That's over. After a dominant first half against the Falcons yesterday, the Seahawks' defense cracked in the third quarter. Atlanta turned a 14-point halftime deficit into a 7-point lead. Richard Sherman wasn't too pleased about it and went on an intense sideline outburst after a Julio Jones touchdown. He even had to be restrained by his teammates. Ryan Clark, do you like, love, or hate? Max. Max. Yes. Do you yes. like, love, or hate? Yes, me. His outburst. Or this guy talks for 11 straight minutes and I don't have anything to say. Please. Now, oh. nobody talks more than you. you this is really shit. We're going to put a clock on this. When are we right. getting the clock? Here we go. Hold on. Go ahead. By the way, Ryan, Ryan can talk Time too. It. Let's not, you're, not, you're not slipping out of this one. Yeah, sure. The only All one right, who doesn't Dallas talk Cowboys is Dallas Cowboys Super Bowl contender, but they, ain't going to, they, they may not go to the playoffs. That's right. That's right. The, <laughs> Giants, the Giants won two go Super Bowls at nine and seven. Can we stay Max, focused? Max, you're on the Go ahead. I want Cam Newton and Odell Beckham Jr., and all the different players we've been talking about today to look at Richard Sherman. You want to act up in a certain way that draws media attention? That's the way you do it, like Richard Sherman. That's who I want on my team. Don't let me sit here and have everyone, oh, you're just being anti-player. No, I'm not. Richard Sherman is who you want. Whether or not it was a calculated move on his part, it had that effect. He was upset, an all-pro corner was upset on a championship defense in the not-too-distant past because there were breakdowns in communication. He let everybody know about it. It had the effect, ultimately, of rallying the team. And they won the game. That's how you do it. Like Richard Sherman. Not like Odell, where you cost your team yardage in a pivotal moment of the game that could cost you because you get them within field goal range or, or, or make it easier for them to score a touchdown. You don't have an impulse control problem where it hurts your team. Your anger at a situation is used in service of your team winning. Richard Sherman is how you do it. That's the guy I want on my team. Well, I didn't love it. I don't hate it because there's very little I could possibly hate about a Richard Sherman. I think not only is he a fantastic ball player, but I think he's an incredible role model because of where he comes from, how intelligent he is, how he carries himself, etc. But I didn't love it, and here's why I didn't love it. First of all, the guy Kelsey McCray that you were really that you really had a problem with for Julio Jones getting that wide open touchdown pass. Um, it ain't like he's a starter. He's filling in for Cam Chancellor. You know, there's those some big shoes to fill. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, getting on the defensive coordinator so flagrantly, it not just speaks to disrespect, but it speaks to insubordination. Uh, you got to wonder about that. It's not a big deal because we understand that Richard Sherman is very outspoken, like those teammates Doug Baldwin, Michael Bennett, and others have said. I mean, that, that, that's, that's, you know, that's, that's nothing compared to what we've seen him like in the past. And I'm certainly not here to denigrate him in any way. I'm simply saying that if you are that dude, think about the intellect that he has and what he brings to the table. It goes back to my line that I just said a few minutes ago. If everybody were you, bro, you, you wouldn't be special. Everybody can't be Richard Sherman. And so when you got a guy like Kelsey McCray filling in for a Cam Chancellor, and you've, got, and you've got the kind of problems that you've been having, 
periodically, like he said throughout the season. We talked about it. That's why he was frustrated. We talked about it. We knew what we were supposed to do. We didn't do it. Yeah, you want to hold guys accountable. But when it's something that flagrant where everybody feels the need to rally it together and rally around you, not just on the field, but on the sideline, you're giving the impression that you're completely out of control. Those other guys that have been through the fire with you might be able to handle it. But some of those newbies, you never know what kind of effect it would have on them. It worked out yesterday, but you got to think about that sometimes simply because they're not the regular crew that you always had. That's what I got from it. Time. He was two minutes. You were 122. Okay, so we see what happens. Therefore, I'd like to use another 20 seconds to quickly say... I usually have more profound Richard, things to say, but Incorrect. Go ahead. Richard go ahead. Sherman showed his intelligence not only if the outburst was calculated, even if it wasn't, but the P.I. at the end of the game that wasn't called was also more smart Richard Sherman play. Otherwise, you lose on a touchdown. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? They spot the ball there? Big deal. Julio Jones is going to catch that if you don't interfere. He's just a smart player who knows how to control his emotions in service of the team. Go ahead. Wrong, you're wrong. Right, because you said, like, this is helps them win. They were down 24-17. They didn't score another point nor stop anybody, really, after that. Right? Then they get the, then they get the pass interference in the red zone. Mm. They finally score. You get the last play. So it wasn't like this rallied the team and they started balling. They won, though, right? Yeah, they won. But, you know, let's just make that clear. Here's what I loved about it, though. I love the reaction of his team. Right? I love the fact that they start jumping on the sideline. They start showing support for him, but they showed support as a team. Mm -hmm. This is about guys who've been through the fire with each other who know Richard Sherman. The thing that was smart about it is he knows he can do it. Now, there are some players on that team that can't. One, because they don't behave that way normally, and people have never seen him do that, and it's out of character for them, but it's not for him. And that's why it was okay. I agree with Stephen A. I don't necessarily like you going at your coach. But if you have that type of relationship, if that's the way that y'all get down, if, you know, some of your friends you can talk to yep. in a certain way. Of course. And Richard Sherman feels like he can do that. The craziest thing about it is the only person who played man on the play was Richard Sherman. So if it's a miscommunication, it may be. Ten other people communicated one thing. Rich didn't. They came out with one receiver. They motioned the tight end outside of Julio Jones. I'm sure there was a check to be made there, and they locked it up. Julio runs down the seam. It's a touchdown. So I understand his frustration. I actually like that he cares, because Coach Tomlin used to get on us after years and years of being good. When we would make a good play that we just thought was good, we'd dab each other off and walk back. When there was a problem, we always felt like, it's OK, guys. We can fix it, because we had been there so many times. What it showed me yesterday is he still has the same fire it took for him to become one of the elite quarterbacks well, there's no in the league. question about that, but the reason why I interject is because of this. Pete Carroll was quoted after the game as saying that the mistake that happened uh, afterward, another touchdown play, he said it might have been residue from that situation. So, again... We're talking about everybody may not be able, may not particularly be able to handle things coming from a Richard Sherman. It doesn't make him wrong. It just means know your personnel around you enough to know that some cats may take that the wrong way. It may not right. handle. It may not be strong enough to handle it. And listen, this isn't the first time, right? It's just handled differently with different players. Remember last year, Carolina Panthers streak down the streak down the, uh, the seam to Olsen, Cam yes. Chancellor, yep. Richard Sherman. Earl Thomas is a miscommunication. He's wide open. They have the conversation. It was a different conversation, obviously, because of what you said, the two people involved. When an all-pro player and Super Bowl champion sees a miscommunication a leading line, to scores against the team and has a temper tantrum about it to try to direct the team's focus toward that miscommunication, that's smart. That's listen, not bad. Hey, listen, I don't mind it. I don't mind it. But what I'm saying is it's the reaction to it that made it a good call, not necessarily the fact that he reacted yeah, that way. Yeah, smart at the end, too. We'll leave it there. Thank you for working the stopwatch. We appreciate that. <laughs> Fastest these two have ever gone. They went really fast. I think it they did quick. it purposely. Of course they did. Because they were they're being so tired. competitive. They bit. wanted to beat each other with the little time, bit. too. Not really. And I won as usual. <laughs> oh, gosh. Ryan, we'll see you soon. Thank you so much. <laughs> Which reaction do you have the biggest problem with from the NFL on Sunday? Cam's postgame presser, Richard Sherman tirade, or OBJ taking his helmet off after scoring the go-ahead touchdown? We'll share those results in just a little bit.